Hey, what's up everybody, Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to create a Luma Fade transition. So it looks a little something like this. And you'll see that it just does this, this transition that's on the Luma, which is the brightness values. So in this case, it goes from the sky downward. And then I added a little zoom in there to give it sort of some motion and sort of some kick to the next scene. And it adds a little sort of flair to it as well. And so that is what we're going to be going over today. Pretty simple effect. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is we need to create ourselves a new sequence going up to file, then new, and then sequence and creating whatever we want so that we can just drag in our footage and have it adjust for us, change sequence settings. We can also just drag our footage down to the new sequence button if we want to, but we'll just do it this way. So what I wanna do is I have my piece of footage here and now I wanna take the footage I'm going to transition from and put it up here. And you wanna make sure that the audio doesn't overlap if you're going to be using both audio, but I'm not. So I'm just actually going to unlink all the audio and then just delete it off of here so we don't have to listen to it. And so now what we have is just the first scene on top of it. And the reason you want it on top instead of left to right is because we're actually building this transition. We're building it from the, the effects called gradient wipe. So go to your effects tab and search for gradient wipe. And you'll notice that there are two of them. We don't want the one under video transitions wipe. This one's gonna try to do it all for us and it's not gonna give us a lot of control. What we want is to build it from the video effects transition and use video or gradient wipe here. The reason we want to use the gradient wipe for our Luma transition is because the gradient wipe is going to set a value, it's gonna set a gradient from white to black or from black to white, depending on which side this is toggled. And what it does is if we drag this number up up here, I'll increase it and you'll see. So right now it's from black to white. And this is how far into the gradient that it's moving. So what it's doing is it's grabbing all of the values that are past or under this value. So everything that's darker than this value. And it is basically um, creating a mask and allowing everything beneath it to come through. So what we're doing is we're creating this gradient and we're moving it forward and it is going to create this transition for us. And what I did was I actually inverted it so that it goes from brightness to darkness and that'll make it so that the sky goes first and then the shadows go. And so all we have to do once we drop this effect on here is we just need to toggle the animation from 0%, go forward about 10 frames. So I'm holding the shift key so I can just double click over here. And let's actually move this spot because there's not a lot of sky here. So let's move it to maybe right here and let's keep the toggled animation. Let's make it sure we have a keyframe, then move forward 10 frames. And then I'm going to bring this up to 100. And now you'll notice that the transition happens now. And this effect is a little bit CPU intensive. So you'll notice that the effect doesn't line up exactly up here. And that's just because it's, like I said, it's CPU intensive. So some, some, uh, some little problems sometimes come up. But this is the effect. It's happening right here like so. And so what we have is we have this Luma um, effect going and it has this transition, but just by you know default it doesn't you know have some little kick to it it looks kind of cool but i like to make it look even like better so what i do is i like to add a little bit of a zoom to it or some sort of camera movement to it zoom is easy to do so that's what we're going to cover so what we want to do is go back to our effects tab and search for transform and then under video effects and then trans distort we'll have our transform it's a favorite effect of mine and from here let's align ourselves onto the first keyframe right where our transition is going to start. And then we're going to go ahead and mark the scale. We're going to toggle the animation for the scale. And this is all on the top clip. And then we're going to click this next arrow up here to go to the next keyframe. It'll jump you over there and that just makes sure that we're lined up. And we're going to scale this up to 300% as high as it will go. Then we're going to uncheck this use composition shutter angle and bring this up to a high number. This will just give us a little motion blur, make it look better. And then now we have this effect. And now you see we have this zoom. And what's neat is because the this is the brightest area, it actually starts from here. And then as it goes through, it opens up. So you can see that kind of opens up there. And that makes a really, really neat effect. And we can, if we want to render this out and only render this out so that we can actually see the real time effect, we can go ahead and click here, right click and hit go to, or my bad, go to here, right click and we can um, set an in. So mark an in right here 
and then go to here and mark it out. And what we're doing is we're just sectioning this off. So when I click enter to render out the frames, it's only going to do the frames I need rendered and not all this, the rest of the stuff. And so now you'll see that once I click enter, I can make this green and we can view this effect in real time. And you'll see that because it's taking so long to render up here, it's an advanced effect. And now we have our effect right here. So we have the footage, it zooms in, and we have this neat sort of fun transition with it. I don't know, it had sort of like a, a nature documentary or something feel to it, some like man vs. wild feel to it. But that's the Luma fade transition. Really easy to do. All you need is a gradient wipe from 0 to 100, and then you can add a little flare by going from transform from uh, 100 to 300. An advanced tip is that right here will actually control where it's grabbing the gradient. So if you don't want it on the footage that it's grabbing, so for example, right now it's on video two, and this is video track two. If you don't want it to start from here, you can actually change this to video track, for example, three, or we don't have anything on video track three, so let's go video track one. And what it's gonna do is now it's going to apply the transition. So let me get this rendering. Now it's going to apply the transition to everything beneath it. So instead of applying it to the darks in here, the darks of uh, the shadows here and then the brightness of the sky, it's actually going to apply it to the darks in this one and the brights in this one. So you see it has a little bit of a different effect. The leaves actually come in over the branches on this one. And so, like I said, it gives you a different effect. It gives you a different feel. It's a little bit more jagged because nothing lines up anymore, but it is a way that you can do it. I just kind of wanted to let you uh, in on that sort of thing in case that's what you wanted to do. But that is how to do the Luma Fade. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below or on our website at adobemasters.net. If you, if you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I make a video every other day on Adobe-related content. And until next time, guys, see ya.